Right, so you might be considering studying data science or AI and are wondering what's in store for you besides countless sleepless nights in the library. I'm just finishing up my master's in data science and artificial intelligence. So today I'm gonna to be giving you a few tips and tricks that might be useful for you. Things that I wish I'd known before I started. So whether you're an undergrad or a master's student, I think that these will be helpful for you. Learn from my mistakes, people. Tip number one. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Especially if you're like me and didn't have a background in data science. But even if you did, I'll say that preparation is essential. And it's all good preparing around the theoretical elements, like essentially reading up on what's going on in the world of data science. But I think that the technical preparation might be a little bit more important because it's easier to catch up on the theoretical side of things. And the main technical areas that I would focus on are coding and maths. Okay, let's break these two areas down a little bit more. And if you studied maths in your undergrad, or maybe even recently in your A-level, you'll be absolutely fine. I know a lot of people start panicking when they think about the maths involved in data science, but it's really not that bad. All you need to do is get your differentiation down, probability, system of linear equations, limits, matrices, and all that kind of thing down to a science. I'll add any other topics I forgot up on screen now, but that's basically it. If possible, try not to learn these concepts in a vacuum. Try to learn how, or at least why, these concepts are important in data science, and that will help you grasp the importance and how to do them a little bit more. Now, coding, coding, coding. Okay, this is the big one, basically. I think this varies most depending on what degree you're studying at which university, what kind of style your lecturers prefer, but I can just give you my opinion. I think that the two safest languages for you to learn are Python and SQL or SQL, however you want to say it. <laughs> and for both of them, I would go with the same general strategy, which is to get a base or to do some sort of quick course to give you the, the essential elements, the foundation that you can then build on. For SQL, it's how to create tables with appropriate constraints, how to make queries, and how to create views and that kind of thing. For Python, don't rush straight into making complex models. And if you're like me, without the strongest background in coding initially, take time to learn the basics, such as how and why we need to do certain things. The very simple things like what is a list? How do you iterate it? How do you create loops? What is a NumPy array? And, and that kind of thing. And you don't have to be anal about this and learn every single subtopic in Python because that's impossible anyway. But just getting a firm grip of the basics would be useful. And I'd also like to get a firm grip on NumPy and Pandas and how those are used as well as things to do with CSV files and how those can be used as that's important in data science. After doing this, I would look to do another course. And then after that, I would want to do another course just to make sure I've got everything nailed on. That's a joke in case you didn't get it. One course, it's fine, it's plenty. Don't get stuck in the loop of course after course after course, okay? One course is more than enough. And after that, projects, 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 okay? You'll learn a lot more by doing projects because, again, you're not learning these theories in a vacuum. When you're using it in a project, you actually realize, okay, this is the use of a list. Wait, I can't do this with a list, but I can do it with an array instead, right? Okay, after that, you can move on to using libraries such as scikit-learn and that kind of thing. Now that you're prepared for your degree, we're on to picking modules. Here my advice would vary depending on whether you're an undergrad or a postgrad. If you're a postgrad like I was, you kind of have a rough idea of where you want to go into. So for example, I did data science and AI, but I always knew that I want to go down the data science analyst route. So as a result, my modules, my optional modules that I picked, they reflect this. On the other hand, if you're more into AI, you would have taken AI modules, right? So you could look to do the same with your modules. But if you're an undergrad, on the other hand, you might not want to paint yourself into a corner too early. So you might want to take a couple of modules from this area, a couple from that, because you never really know exactly what you want to go into. At least in my opinion, may maybe you're 18 and you know exactly, I want to do this. If that's the case, then pick your modules. But I would advise against specializing too early. The next couple of points are much more general, which is basically how to maximize your chances of getting a good grade in data science. If your course is like mine, you have four key pillars. Lectures, coursework, labs, and exams. Courseworks and exams, as I'm hoping you know, are not optional. You have to do those <laughs> to pass your degree, right? But of the remaining two, the one that is actually optional, which may surprise a couple of you, is lectures. It's an internal debate between students, even students on my course. Is going to lectures compulsory? You have one side saying, of course you have to go to lectures, it's a no-brainer. 
it's easier to ask questions, and it's much easier to be more engaged when the lecturer is right there rather than being in your room where you could go off for a snack at any second, or the warmth of your bed is calling you back, yeah? On the other hand, the study from home heathens will tell you that you're getting the same content anyway, and with Microsoft Teams and Zooms you can easily ask questions, and you save time on commuting to the lecture and that kind of thing. And guess what? They're both right. So what you have to do is pick what's best for you. Maybe even try both and see what works out best. But one thing that is not optional is labs, okay? Go to your labs, please. I feel like I should have a table to emphasize. Go to your labs, okay? Labs are the opportunity you have to show up and just get hands-on help from your lecturers or the demonstrators. Unlike the lectures where lecturers have to go at a certain speed and account for everybody in the room, here the demonstrators are literally just waiting there, ready to answer any questions you have. So go to your labs, ask anything you're not sure about, be shameless about it. There's no stupid questions. There are, but the demonstrators won't tell you that. <laughs> for exams and coursework, I'm going to do dedicated videos on my productivity systems. But those are my tips and tricks and what I've learned over the past year. So guys, learn from my mistakes, please. And comment anything else, any questions, any other comments. Correct me if I said something wrong, but yeah, peace.